But let me ask you this. What do you think is the difference between accountability and responsibility? I once read a kind of fun way to see the difference. And it said that if you're a manager, say, and you aren't clear about what you held accountable for, then you might want to take responsibility for finding out. You get that? I'll just repeat that. If you're a manager and you aren't clear about what you are held accountable for, you might want to take responsibility for finding out. So typically in the world of business, we're pretty loose about how we use our language of responsibility and accountability. And as a result, this has a big impact on why, even though we assign accountability for sales results to our salespeople, so we assign a territory, we assign a budget to them, they still don't take ownership for them. The fact of the matter is this, that in the majority of cases, while we've assigned the accountability, we haven't transferred the responsibility. The fact is, we still own it. And as long as we own it, they don't. So right now, you have salespeople on your team that approach you every day with their issues. And they've become masters, albeit subconsciously in some cases, at actually handing those issues right back to you. And we just accept them with open arms. So things like, hey boss, we have a problem with XYZ product not being in stock. And as easy as that, they pass the ball on to us. And now we have something else on our to-do list to get done. So the first thing we need to understand is who has the problem? they do. Whose sales numbers are they? It's their sales numbers. Whose sales numbers are being impacted by this problem? Their sales numbers. Sure, the impact of those product issues will ultimately affect you. But all too often, we pick up their ball without transferring back their responsibility. So the first thing you have to get right when transferring responsibility, as Ken Blanchard from The One Minute Manager says, and his book, The One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey, says the first thing we have to get right is our pronouns. It's not that we have a problem, it is that you or they have the problem. So a more effective response to the, hey boss, we have a problem with XYZ product not being in stock, would be, okay Bill, so... What do you have in mind to rectify the issue? So now who has the ball? So it's a bit like playing tennis, if you like. The last person to hit the ball over the net wins the responsibility. I'm sure that you have more than enough on your plate right now to do without doing your salespeople's work as well. In fact, take a look at your diary right now. How many of those items on your to-do list are yours? Seriously? Look at your to-do list. How many things on that list are for you and for the things that you want to accomplish versus putting out other people's fires and doing other people's work? So let me give you some more examples of what I mean here. And so here are some really typical examples that I've heard sales managers use over the years. So they say things like, John, I think what you need to be doing is, or what I would do is, or Is that something that you can get done by next week? Do you think that if you did X, Y, and Z, it would have an impact? Or, well, I suggest that. Or, you need to call so-and-so. Or, can that get done by such-and-such a date? Or, I want you or I need you to do. And as you can see, whilst all of those statements and questions are all kind of okay when it comes to, if you like, project management and follow-up, none of those issues have the effect of really transferring the responsibility. You as the manager still own the issue. So instead of saying, well, I think what you need to be doing is, the way we transfer responsibility is we say, what do you think needs to be done here? Or instead of saying, well, is that something that you can do by next week? Here we need to try. When do you believe you can get this done? Now who owns it? They do. Instead of saying, I need you to call. What if we said, John, what do you see as the next steps to move this thing forward? 
instead of saying, I want you to, what if we ask, tell me what you would do in a situation like this? So instead of saying, can you get that done by X, Y, Z time? We ask, when can you get that done by? Now, who is responsible? So the more you use open-ended and high-gain questions, which we'll talk more about next month when we cover coaching, the more you will place the responsibility back onto the individual salesperson to come up with their own responses. The more you push back the ownership for the task onto the salesperson, the more they're going to have to pick up the ball. And this means that you begin now to spend more of your time coaching them on how they can get better outcomes as opposed to simply being a manager who's following up and chasing outcomes. In other words, the outcomes are theirs. You're just helping to facilitate their thinking, to give them some ideas, some tactical methodologies in order for them to achieve their outcomes. Now, whilst I get that this is probably a whole lot easier said than done, however, if you as a sales leader don't transfer responsibility, then you own it. This stands to reason, right? If they don't own it, who must? You. So if the sales leader owns the outcome, then let's face it, there's no reason for the salesperson to be anything other than just a resource to get the job done. As you can see, I get really passionate about this. Because if you want to begin the empowerment process and you want to raise the level of engagement of your sales team, then you have to get your people to own their own outcomes. Now we're going to show you how to do this. But first of all, Let's get back to this thing called accountability versus responsibility. So, whereas accountability is being held to the consequences of an outcome by an external force or person, in other words, someone or something is holding you to account for the outcome of, say, a project or the solution to a problem or fulfillment of an assignment, Responsibility, on the other hand, is all about ownership of the endeavor. In other words, owning the project, owning the problem, owning the assignment. So let me give you an extreme example of this. Somebody puts a gun to your head and says, I need you to do A, B, C, or D. That is an external force holding you accountable for A, B, C, or D. Whereas responsibility says that I own it. It says that I'm doing this on my own accord, on my own volition. There is no gun to my head. I'm doing it so that I can fulfill those outcomes. I'm doing it for myself. And so to be responsible means to not only have a great concern for the outcome of the action, but it also means that one has a very clear sense of obligation for doing the action or bringing that project or action to fruition. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Right now, stop and think about your sales team. How many of them really and truly are responsible? So while we've made them accountable for their territories, for their client base, how many of them really own it? How many of them actually have stepped up and said, this is mine and I will do whatever it takes in order to get the job done? This is the big difference between accountability and responsibility. And so while we can delegate accountability, you can never delegate responsibility. Because it doesn't matter what you're supposed to be accountable for. What matters is whether one feels a sense of ownership. So if a person's sense of responsibility is smaller than their accountabilities, then the accountabilities will always suffer. So the key point then for accountability is that it is something that is external to the individual. So as we said, I can hold you account for a process, an operation, or a result. Whereas really, on the other hand, responsibility says that, hey, if I drop the ball, I am willing to pick it back up. When I make a mistake, I own that mistake. I am willing to fix it. It's my obligation to act. The, the fact is that for most of us to be fully engaged, not only at work, but in our lives in general, 
we need to feel a true sense of ownership for our lives and our work. And if we don't, that's when the problems arise. So getting your people to take ownership and responsibility is the foundation of having an empowered team that lives and plays above the line.